Welcome to my shop. My name is Guy and today we're going to be taking a look at Crowley's new Ender 3 V3. Let's take a look at the specs on this real quick. This is an FDM printer. It's a 220 by 220 by 250 build area. The hot end on this is capable of going up to 300 degrees Celsius and the bed goes up to 110. Another interesting thing is that this does use the same nozzle that the K1C uses. The heat brake and the nozzle are all one and it does have a hardened steel tip on it. The gears in here are also hardened steel so you can use abrasive materials like carbon fiber. Both the X and the Y use these linear rods for travel. Another specification on this machine is that Crowley says it is capable of 600 millimeters per second. I don't doubt that all the mechanicals on this is capable of that, but more realistically, you're going to be printing in the two to 300 millimeters per second speed. Now the build surface on this is a flexible PEI plate, and it does have the little screws in the back, so when you put it on, you know you're always going to put it on the right spot. Now looking at the back of the machine here, this is the uh, filament runout sensor, Bowden tube to the direct drive tool head. The parts cooling fan is down here in the back, which is actually works really, really well. Now, another thing you may have noticed on this is that there's no wheels on the back of this at all. They're linear rods for the Z axis, and this is what they call a core XZ machine. There's two motors on this using belts that move the X back and forth and also the Z up and down. There is a separate motor for the Y axis. It's obviously a bed slinger. Um, this machine is really fast. Now this is a spool holder on it. It's kind of janky how this is. There's actually a piece that comes with it, which is this little guy right here. And this is designed to prevent this from going backwards and coming up the, the filament coming off the spool. I don't know if I really like that. I'll probably do something different with that later on. Now I've got the cover off the tool head. You can see it does have a ceramic heater cartridge. Uh, there's a breakout board. There is some lights here. I've got it turned off right now, but let me turn it on real quick. And that actually shines through the corality part right here and lights that up in front. It's kind of a nice touch. I really wish they had a light underneath here to light up the part. Now there is a fan in the front of this, and I mentioned before there's a fan in the back. Those are both parked cooling fans. That one comes in from the back, one comes in from the front, and it does have a uh, hot end cooling fan right here. Another thing Crowley's done that really shows me I paid a lot of attention to detail on this is the base on this is cast aluminum, so it's not plastic. It's very, very sturdy. The uprights and the cross member are also all one piece, and that's cast aluminum also. This is really super sturdy, and it has to be with the amount of speed that this thing is going at. Another nice thing is that they've used the same screen that they have on all their K1 printers. Uh, very easy to use, very clear, very legible, very bright. All your controls for the fans, the temperature, these are the different files. You do get a thumbnail. And then these are all the system things. Very, very nice, very fast, very responsive. Now this is all the auto leveling by itself. It actually creates a bed mesh and it will automatically set the Z offset also. Now this machine does run Clipper. It's Crowley's own version of it. And you can get root access by simply going into the menu, selecting root access, and then it'll give it to you. And after you've done that, you can go in and uh, it does have fluid right installed from the factory, which is really, really nice. So you can get a web interface to control the machine. Let's get this off of here.
Now the slicer said this would take 17 minutes, it took 16 minutes. Now they're not counting the amount of time it takes to do all the uh, calibration stuff, that's just the physical printing. But uh, this looks pretty good, really don't have any complaints at all with it. Let's take a look at some of the other prints I've done on this. So this is a jar with a screw-on lid that I've made in the same Polymaker Polylight PLA and uh, very, very good. Screws on, nice and tight. If you look at the layer lines on this, it's just, it's just perfect. It does a really good job. Here's a, uh, I guess you could call it a vase. Again, the same Polymaker PLA. Now this came with the machine. This is a phone stand that's print in place. So you can test the tolerances for it. And uh, this was made with Creality Hyper PLA. Now this is one of the standard tests that comes with Orca. There's a lot of stringing up here, but there's always a lot of string in this. And I'm sorry, I broke those off a little bit. But again, really nice. You can see the uh, overhang on it was really good. Went up to about almost 80. Well, it actually went up to 80 with no problem, which is pretty impressive. All the uh, overhangs are real nice. This one, a little bit off, but that's to be expected. Now this is a Voron cube. Corners are a little bit more rounded than I'd like, and that's just going to take some tuning to set the uh, pressure advance. But there's no ringing on these whatsoever. And we also can't forget the benchy. Now this is one that I myself sliced. It took, I think, uh, 40 minutes or so. Um, did a really, really nice job on this bench. He's one of the best benches I've seen in a long time. Now this was printed in vase mode. Came out really nice. No zits anywhere. You see a lot of that on things like that. Here's a small garbage can I printed in vase mode also. You can see the layer lines. Again, there's no VFAs or vertical fine artifacts on this at all. Did a really good job. Now this is a case for an Orange Pi 5 that I made in PLA carbon fiber that Creality sent me along with the printer. And I don't know if you can see that. It's just perfect. Did a really good job. There is some stringing on here. But this is really super strong, and uh, again, very, very happy with that. Now here's a box I printed also in the uh, PLA CF, or carbon fiber, and uh, really nice. It's a little bit of string, getting a lot of that on this, but this is a parametric box that I printed, and uh, just really, really nice. I'm really happy with all the prints on this machine. So let's talk about the things I like about this printer and the things I like not so much. What I really like about this printer, first of all, is the print quality. The print quality is excellent. Uh, I really like the ability to use abrasive materials like the carbon fiber and uh, glow-in-the-dark materials, things like that with the hardened steel nozzle. It's a really big benefit. The Core XZ motion system on this, on this machine is very, very fast. It's very accurate. I found that the dimensional accuracy, the parts that I'm producing with this are spot on. Uh, if you need to do anything that's print in place, it does a really good job with it. I really like the screen that they took from the K1 series. I also really like how they have two part cooling fans on there. It does a really good job with PLA. The auto leveling on this and the automatic Z offset work really well. I'm getting fantastic first layers on it, and uh, it does everything that it's supposed to do in that area. Now the things I like not so much. I don't know if you can hear it, but that fan is constantly going even when it's idling. 
I don't really like that. I really wish they would do something about that. Not a big fan of the spool holder. Uh, they finally put the power cord in the back, not on the side so it isn't sticking out the side. But now you've got the spool going way off to the side that should be either sideways like this or even up on top I think would be fine. Well, other than those few things, this is a fantastic printer. I can't say enough good things about it. It's a very good price on it. Um, if you're looking for a printer that you're looking for as a, a tool just to print things, this is it. You really don't have to do many mods to this at all. I really wish it had a light. I'm going to add that later. I wish they would fix the, the sound on it. But other than that, it is a really, really good printer and you can't go wrong with it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.